Hey everybody, it is Saturday, July 17th, 2021. Back with another dose of economic reality. Now today we're going to try to paint a broad picture of where we're at. Uh, we are at the end of this current financial system cycle. Now this economic collapse, reset, transition, it's got many different names depending on who you ask is not going to play out exactly like we've seen in other countries but there are going to be many similarities and we're talking about countries that have seen hyperinflation already so lots of similarities but also lots of differences we have the world reserve currency and that's a luxury that's allowed the united states to keep printing money to keep funding programs to keep the spending to keep piling debt on top of debt on top of debt and other countries have not had that luxury because they don't have the world reserve currency. But there are certain parts of this unwinding that we're seeing in the economy that are going to be similar. The laws of supply and demand are the same wherever you go. Too much money, too much spending, not enough goods and services being produced equals rising prices. And that's true no matter where you go. All right, so that's like saying 2 plus 2 equals 4 in the United States, but 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 in Canada. It's the same wherever you go. It's math, it's supply and demand. Now, we have a much different way of causing extra supply and demand here in the United States because we have this unlimited printing press with the world reserve currency. So we can print even more money here without such drastic and sudden consequences. Now the consequences are coming and they're already here. We're already starting to see many of these things unfold right now, but it's just going to happen in slow motion. And some people say it's not slow motion, but I'm talking about a long perspective here over the last 50 years. And it's been about 50 years now since we came off the gold standard back in 1971 under Nixon. And I really feel like we're starting to see the beginning of the end right now. Right now, I want to make a, a side note here. I do still see a lot of people down in comments blaming one side or the other side, political views. Right? It doesn't matter what side. Both sides are doing the same. Now, one side may do more of something than the other side, but the total picture is still the same. You're seeing unlimited amounts of money printing. And actually, the current administration, I like the current administration a little bit better as far as financial Right, at least you know they're going to print money. They say they're going to print money. They say they're going to have all these trillions of dollars in stimulus packages and infrastructure bills, different bills for this, that, and this. While the previous administration, they were way more deceptive. They said things like, oh, we're going to pay off the debt. We're conservative. And it was all a lie. They printed money also. And uh, the current administration, again, at least you know what they're going to do their intentions are not as veiled and i've made this more this year than i have in any other year 2021 so far uh digital assets my portfolio is up like 600 percent because of digital assets i'm talking about digital coins um, i do trade those i don't think they're a long-term store of value there's a lots of risks but the trading that i've done with the big sell-offs and then the big um pumps pumps and dumps trading those has given me an amazing return this year all right so i like the fact that they're saying they're going to print money because that creates demand for non-dollar assets and yes i'm talking about digital assets and it makes it much much easier to trade and profit from these what i call assets now some people don't call them assets but if you can buy something low and sell it high um, that's a good trade it doesn't matter if it's going to be around 10 20 years from now but in the meantime, what I'm doing is accumulating something that will be around 10, 20 years from now and beyond. And I'll give you three seconds to tell me what that is. One, two, three, silver. Now, a lot of people ask, why silver? Why not gold? Well, the gold price is already so high. After this financial system finally fails, silver is going to be where it's at. And yes, they're trying to push a digital dollar onto us on the entire globe. They want us to go all digital. They want complete control. 
but you're still going to have real world items and assets outside of the digital system, including commodity foods. There's still going to be barter and trade. And what are you going to trade with? Unless you grow a lot of food, you're going to need something tangible to trade with. Uh, maybe you'll find somebody that will give you food for paper. You know, maybe. But more realistic is if you have silver, and unlike gold, you can get a lot of silver for a much, much lower price. Uh, that is going to be where it's at. And I'm not making any predictions, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw silver in the future, the very near future, if we see it integrated into the financial system, once this current system, including the digital dollar, once that finally collapses and fails. All right, so link down below, those of you that are asking, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? That's what I'm doing, and I'm not giving financial advice, right? I don't want you to go out and spend your, you know, your, your kids' or children's lunch money on silver, so that's why, of course, we don't give financial advice because you don't want to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, so to speak. But that's what I continue to do. And the profits that I made trading this year, a lot of that just went into silver. All right, link down below, SD Bullion. That's the place that I get it. Never had a problem. Uh, there's still lots of places you can get silver. It's what I continue to do. It's something that's not changed for me for several years. Accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. I buy some every month often as I can and you'd be surprised how quickly it stacks up when you try to put away a little bit each month to buy some more, to stack some more. That's why I, keep, that's why I say keep stacking at about the end of every video. Just about every video I say that. All right, but just out here uh, earlier this month here in July, the new labor force participation rate, have we recovered? Well, see for yourself and if you're just listening to this, if you're on a podcast or something and can't see this, this is the chart it goes all the way back to mid-2016, a five-year chart, and it shows the number of people in the U.S. not in the labor force. And we saw the big surge up here in March 2020 with all the shutdowns. And we see, even recently here, the latest numbers from June say that we have not recovered. In fact, we're not even halfway to where we were before the big shutdown recession kicked everything into chaos and you may say that the word chaos is exaggerating uh, but chaos is coming uh, and it may not be on your street yet um, but take a look around it is spreading and I hope it never shows up on your street or my street but uh, continue to prepare because this thing's looking nastier and nastier this financial situation with this money printing inflation uh, people not able to work or choosing not to work, lower production, supply chain disruptions, uh, transportation costs exploding, uh, shortages, severe weather, farms getting hammered and slammed, food, uh, crops being devastated. Uh, it's looking pretty dim, folks, so continue to prepare. Uh, but yes, try to stay positive, try to have fun. And uh, do things you can do to have fun, but also continue to prepare. You got to be balanced, in my opinion. That's just me. Keep stacking, everybody. Stay well, stay safe, stay prepared. Until next time, bye for now, everybody. Peace.